Welcome everyone to the Spread Sports Network. I'm your host, Jim Sella. Thanks for tuning in today. We're here to bring you some of that real news, none of that bullshit fake news that you hear on some of these other networks. Biggest news today, Pittsburgh Steelers signing middle linebacker John Bostick. This guy has had, I don't know, a, a a good career, an okay career, an injury-plagued career. There's a couple ways you can label it. In the years that he's played a lot of games, he's played well. Uh, played 14 games for Indianapolis last year, uh, 97 tackles. Paid 13 games for the Bears in 2014, he had 84 tackles. In 2013, he played all the games, had 57 tackles. That was his rookie year. So he has shown some promise. Uh, he's also been hurt in 2015, so he only played 11 games during that year, <laughs> two tackles. So what are you really getting out of this guy? What does this really do for the Steelers is my question here. A lot of people think that this is going to change their draft strategy dramatically or, or change what they're going to do, and I'm not really sold on that. Bostick is only 26 years old. Okay, he's not slow, but he's also not extremely fast. He ran a 4.61 uh, 40 when he was at the combine as a rookie, so that's not overly fast, but again, not slow. Um, he is thought of more as a run stopper, so maybe are the Steelers bringing this guy in as a depth guy, as a rotational guy? I think they realize that, A, they don't have a lot of cap room right now, so there's no way they were going to go out and get one of the top middle linebackers in free agency. B, they never do that anyway. They never overpay for anybody uh, from another team anyway. Some people may think they're overpaying for Le'Veon at the moment. Uh, and C, they like to build from the draft. So they're... Their belief here is probably, let's find a stopgap, let's draft somebody of uh, Ryan Shazier's pedigree. I'm sure you're probably not going to find a linebacker who can run a 4-3-40 like Shazier did. But you go out, you find a young, fast guy, you use him, you use Bostic, you use Vince Williams in a bit of a three-man rotation there in the middle. And you kind of hope for the best. I mean, what else can the Steelers really do right now? They're not going to get one of the top middle linebackers in the draft. I mean, they'll get one of the better ones. But they're not going to get one of the best ones. I mean, some people have said Roquan Smith could project into middle linebacker, being that he's only 6'1", 236. Um, he'll probably be gone. Tremaine Edmonds from Virginia Tech, 6'5", 253. I mean, this guy's big and strong. He did run a 4'5", 40. I don't know if he'll play middle linebacker. I would project him probably in the middle, but I don't know if everybody else would. Some teams might want to use this guy as a pass rusher, but I'd like him in the middle. But again, no way he's going to be there. Uh, Rashawn Evans m might be there from Alabama. And then Leighton Vanderish, uh, the guy that everybody else is talking about, the guy that most uh, NFL mock draft analysts, whatever you want to call them, they're pretty much all placing Leighton with the Steelers. Uh, he's a big guy, 6'4", 256. He didn't do everything at the combine. He only did a few of the uh, drills there. So we'll have to wait for his pro day to get his 40 time and his bench reps. But he did have a 39 and a half inch vertical. He ran a 6.88 a six, eight, eight in the cone drill and a 4.15 20 yard shuttle. He's big. He's strong. Uh, he plays around the ball well. Uh, he's only started one year, so that's one thing you may worry about. But it was a big year when he played. Some people are projected him possibly in the second round. I think his big combine has really come out and pushed him into the back end of the first round. Uh, the fact that he fits a lot of what the Steelers want and look for in a linebacker, I think that might help why he's you know being projected where he is. 
And I think he could be a, a good pick for Pittsburgh. But, again, I don't think he's going to come in and be this big impact guy. So if the Steelers do take somebody like him at middle linebacker, I think he's looking at a rotation with Bostick. I, I, uh, Bostick isn't terrible, but he isn't great. Uh, whatever rookie comes in here is probably not going to be great. Even Ryan Shazier struggled a little bit in his rookie year. Not terribly, but he wasn't great. I mean, you have to go back to Kendrell Bell to really think about the last time uh, a Steeler middle linebacker had a great rookie season. And then he even fizzled out. So it doesn't happen overnight. There's a lot of things that Steelers middle linebacker needs to do. And I think that uh, with the signing of Bostic here, they're really looking at trying to pair him with a young guy, use them to work to each other's strengths, and try to get them on the field. And now you get, people were talking about Tyler Medikavich. Just get out of here with that. No way you're going to see Tyler Medikavich come out there and start for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And let me tell you this. If he is their long-term starter, they're screwed. Their defense is done. The dude's a good special teamer. He's a good rotational guy. He's a good backup. And he's never going to be a starter. So let's just be perfectly honest with ourselves. The other option the Steelers have at pick 28 in the first round is the safety position. Uh, not a lot of great safeties. You got Derwin James, Justin Reed, Ronnie Harrison, those are pretty much the only guys that are really projected to go in the first round. Uh, they might go in the front, the back end. It's just not a big... I'm not saying the safeties are bad. They're just not really being hyped up a lot this year. I like Harrison's size. It's 6'3", 214. Reed, 6'1", 204. And Derwin James is 6'3", 215. Uh, I, there's, there's been no pro days yet, or at least not a lot of pro days yet. So we're still waiting on being able to see what some of these guys have, can do there as far as 40 times and things. But I don't know. I mean, I've seen people compare Derwin James to Eric Berry. Eric Berry's a beast. So I, I don't know. James is obviously probably the best out of the bunch, but is he going to be there when the Steelers pick at 28? <laughs> I bet not. So you're basically looking at who's going to be the best prospect there. Is the safety that the Steelers like or the linebacker that the Steelers like? Whoever's there at 28, that's who you're, they're going to take. I mean, you just that's just regular football thinking. I mean, that's just the way the Steelers do things. I think it's going to be a middle linebacker, honestly, because I think there's a couple more middle linebackers they like early and some of these safeties that project a little bit later. Uh, a safety I like, and this would be a project guy, and I'm not trying to do this as being a homer or anything like that, because I certainly am not a homer, especially when it comes to Penn State. I still wouldn't send my kid to that school, quite honestly. But anyway, Marcus Allen, the safety out of Penn State, 6'2", 202 pounds. He's projected to go somewhere around the fourth round. Uh, he's a guy that I like as a project player. So, yeah, you're not going to go in and draft him in the first or second round, but if you take him in the fourth or fifth round, if he's available, uh, maybe the Steelers find a veteran stopgap to play along Sean Davis this year or maybe for two years and, and Allen could come in and play later. Or you just draft Allen, let him learn a little bit, and play good special teams. I mean, he's a pretty good tackler. He's a big, strong guy. He's not afraid to stick his neck in and get dirty. So either way... I like this Allen. Um, not a lot of combine results or anything. Just somebody I, I watched play a little bit as I was sitting on my couch on Saturdays doing nothing. Allen would definitely be more of a closer to the line guy, by the way. And uh, so you would definitely have to move Sean Davis to free safety and Alice, Allen to strong safety. So that would be something the Steelers would have to consider if they did draft him. So most likely they will not. Just somebody that I would like to see join the team uh, in one of the later rounds. But that's really all I have for you guys on this subject. I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about Bostic and, and what it really means for the defense, what it means for the draft. I don't really think it means as, as, as much as what some people think. He's not going to be the savior. Uh, there are people hating on it. I haven't seen anybody really come out and say, yeah, 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 woo we signed him. But I have seen a lot of people hate on this kid. Don't hate on the guy. 
he's going to be a solid depth guy. Uh, most likely, they're not going to bring back Lawrence Timmons now. They signed Bostic. He's only 26. Timmons is like 85. So you'd definitely rather take Bostic over Timmons, although I would have taken Timmons on a short-term contract. And let me make per perfectly clear real quick, the Bostic deal is still pending a physical as of the moment that I'm recording this. So there are no contract details out. So I don't know what the contract was for. I don't know what they're paying him. Uh, it's not even 100% set in stone that he will be a stealer, although there are no indications that he'll fail uh, the physical. So most likely he will be, and once he is, they will release those contract details. And we'll put something out on our Twitter page, on our Facebook page. Uh, basically anywhere you can find the spread, you'll be able to find the info. The Steelers will still have some cap issues as they move forward with the draft. Uh, I don't know what their exact cap details are. Looks like over the cap has them at about $2 million, $2.7 million in cap room right now. Uh, they're going to have to get a little bit further under if they want to uh, be able to sign this free agent class. I don't think... This probably doesn't have Bostic in it either because the deal hasn't been made official. So this isn't uh, bringing that into account. So once we find out those numbers, the cap space will even change a little bit more. Uh, Pittsburgh's definitely going to do some things to get around that. I still think they could restructure uh, Joe Hayden's deal and give him a bit of an extension to drop that cap hit. I've heard that there's an extension coming for Ben Roethlisberger at some point that pushes his deal a little bit further out and lowers that cap hit for this year, and then he'll get some bonus money up front that'll help make up for it. Uh, not much you can do about the Ryan Shazier, $8.7 million. I mean, that's there. There's nothing you can do. You're, you're going to have to pay the guy, and he deserves to be paid. Obviously, I'm not saying he doesn't, um, but that definitely hurts the Steelers right now. Uh, big Al Villanueva already restructured. Marcus Gilbert, there may be a restructuring coming from him. I think the Castro and Tuit may have already restructured, and Vance McDonald may still be a cap casualty. Maybe the Steelers see a uh, tight end they like in the draft. J.J. Wilcox could still get cut. He's a $3.8 million cap hit. Uh, so a lot of things could still happen between now and the NFL draft at the end of April. Uh, Steelers never make a splash in free agency, so I don't know why too many people were complaining. Some people thought they were going to sign Tyron Mathau, the safety from Arizona. Come on, man. I know he signed a one-year $6.5 million deal with, with the Texans, which is a little confusing, as I don't see them as Super Bowl contenders. And he was saying that he wanted to go to a winner, so we'll see how that goes. But I definitely knew the Steelers weren't going to sign him to a big-time contract. They just don't have the cap space. It's not that they didn't want to. They just don't have the money. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what Pittsburgh can do to finagle some more cap room. Um, their top guys, Big Ben, $23 million, Lev Bell, 14.5, Hayward, 12.4, Hayden, 11.9, Pouncey, 10.5, uh, the Shazier number, Antonio Brown, 7.9. I mean, these are big cap hits, so the money's got to go somewhere. So we'll see what they can do. I'm pretty confident they can do some some more things to get under the cap, some more restructuring, some uh, extensions, things of that nature. But it's definitely going to be in the draft. And the Steelers have had pretty good drafts in the last two, three years, if you ask me. They hit on their first three draft picks uh, two years ago, and their draft last year was uh, pretty good as well. Um, people have said they don't really like uh, Bud Dupree. I don't really have an issue with Bud Dupree. I know he hasn't played as well as some people thought he would or get the sack numbers that you thought he would, but that's not what the Steelers' outside linebackers do anymore. So switching him and Watt around may happen is what I've heard, mostly because Watt's better against the run and teams like to run to that side. Uh, but at the same time, all teams are going to do is then just run to the other side. So Dupree just needs to figure it out against the run and get a little better. Maybe he needs to work with Watt in the off season and kind of get his handwork better and stop getting singled out real quick and blown up by one block. But finally, yes, this is all I have for you fans. Hit us up on Twitter, bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Come back to YouTube, click subscribe. Steelers season's getting close. All I'm really paying attention to is hockey season when most people are watching basketball. Go Pens.